Hello everyone, how are you doing today? You are all welcome to my channel, Apostle Paul Taiwo YouTube channel. To my recent subscribers I want to say a very big thank you, and to those that have been here all along, God bless you. And if this is your first time on this channel, I want to say a very big welcome and thank you for tuning into my video today. Kindly endeavor to click the subscription button and also the notification icon so that you can be notified whenever I dropped a new video or come up for prayers. Have you heard of our church building project? We will like to use this opportunity to ask for your financial support for the ministry. We are raising a building for the church ministry and this involve lots of fund. In case God has put it in your heart to support the ministry church building project, kindly reach out to us on our contact details which is on the video description. And you can also send directly to the account details on the screen. We will be glad and grateful to receive your financial support for the work of God. For God loves a cheerful giver. Thank you. This video you are about to listen to I believe will bless your heart, and help you to come into repentance, and also strengthen your bond with God and with His Holy Spirit in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Endeavor to like this video, share it to all your friends, contacts and loved ones, God bless you. Territorial Rulers of Darkness Let us read in the book of Daniel 10 11 to 15 And he said to me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you, and stand upright, for to you am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word to me, I stood trembling. Twelve then said he to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you did set your heart to understand, and to chasten yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I am come for your words. Thirteen But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But, see, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. 14 Now I am come to make you understand what shall befall your people in the latter days, for yet the vision is for many days. 15 And when he had spoken such words to me, I set my face toward the ground and I became dumb. What happened is that the prophet Jeremiah wrote a prophecy about the punishment and the captivity of the people of Israel for a period of 70 years in Babylon. First of all, we must understand that it is the Lord who established kingdoms and set the time frame of kingdoms or the duration of empires and kingdoms of men. The Jews were to be in captivity for 70 years in the Babylonian Empire. However, when Daniel realized that the duration of captivity and punishment written by Jeremiah has expired, he consulted the Lord to inquire about the fate of his people and their deliverance from captivity. As a result, the Lord dispatched a celestial messenger to respond to his inquiry. Yet, this angelic messenger informed Daniel that he was opposed from entering the territory of Babylon by the Prince of Persia, therefore, he could not deliver the message to Daniel on time. Actually, Daniel's prayer was answered on the first day of his fasting but he ended up fasting for three weeks because the territorial governor of Babylon opposed the angel who came with a message. I want to underline that there are different categories of angels. We have warrior angels, members of the heavenly army under the authority of the chief angel Michael. The word chief is synonym to prince and governor. Michael is one of the princes and governors in heaven. He is also an archangel. Archangels are the first group of angels to be created. There are also angels that are messengers like Gabriel. We must understand that the angel that was sent to Daniel was a messenger, not a soldier or warrior. When he arrived in the land of Persia, he was opposed by the prince of Persia, who is the chief and the governor of this territory. You might wonder how could the prince of Persia oppose and prevent a celestial angel from entering this region? The truth is that this prince is not a human but a territorial principality. But thanks to the prince, the archangel Michael that this celestial messenger was able to deliver the message to Daniel. Michael is the defender of Israel. He is always in movement and in war. If you go to heaven, it is not easy to see Michael because he is always busy. There are myriad of warriors angels in activity all the time because we are in an intense war with powers of darkness. It is because Michael is a prince that he was able to overpower the prince of Persia. Notice that we are dealing with two princes on the opposite side. In the spirit world, God takes into account the equilibrium or balance of power. In a period of war, an angelic messenger cannot do anything, only a soldier or warrior angel that is required. I mean, even the test and trial of our faith is proportionate to our spiritual strength. 
the war we face is proportionate to our calling. God will not send you to expose a false prophet unless you have a prophetic anointing. In this war, you cannot just engage spirit like that. You must be careful. A lightweight is not supposed to engage a heavyweight. Unless you are anointed and prepared with instruction by the Lord don't engage. If you have no specific instructions, do not engage. Nowhere in the Bible do you see Gabriel fighting Satan and demons. It's always Michael. Even after the death of Moses, Michael stood against Lucifer. Elijah fought false prophets because he had a prophetic anointing. Paul denounced and opposed false apostles because he had apostolic anointing. I encountered many angels of the Lord including cherubim who have eyes everywhere and four wings. Their purpose is to defend God's holiness. You cannot describe these beings with human vocabulary. The angels of the Lord are generally dressed like ancient Egyptian and ancient Roman soldiers. And one of them is Michael. I was granted by God to see him twice on different occasions. Archangel Michael is at least 10 meters. He is immense. I saw him in the period of my conversion. I was in my room when the Lord opened my eyes. In fact, I saw the devil. He was about to come after me. Then suddenly I saw the heavens opened and I saw the Archangel Michael coming down in my room. As he was coming down, I saw the devil backing off and escaping. When the devil saw Michael coming down, he escaped even before Michael landed in my room. The devil is afraid of this angel. The Archangel Michael is 10 meters tall and he is often dressed like a Roman soldier with weapons of the warrior described in Ephesians 6. He was dressed in sandals, he was holding a shield on his arm and he was wearing a helmet on his head. This angel is very impressive and he had a huge sword. When he landed, the devil has already escaped. This scenario happened twice in my early Christian life. The Prince of Persia was the governor, the principality ruling the whole territory of Persia, and when the time of duration set for the Persian Empire was exhausted, the Greek Empire conquered the land. As a consequence, the devil appointed another principality called the Prince of Greece. We understand that on top of each country of the world, the devil has appointed a territorial prince, a governor that we call principality. Every country is ruled by a demon who is the governor of this country. In the spirit realm, our country of France is ruled by a prince who has an invisible government that is ruling the whole country of France. The visible president of France gets instruction and directive from the principality ruling France through secret order and brotherhood like Freemasonry and Rosicrucianism. All the countries of the world are ruled by invisible governments and principalities. That is why the Lord said to Joshua in Joshua 1 1 4 Now after the death of Moses the servant of the Lord it came to pass, that the Lord spoke to Joshua the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, To Moses my servant is dead, now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you, and all this people, to the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Three every place that the sole of your foot shall tread on, that have I given to you, as I said to Moses. Four from the wilderness and this Lebanon even to the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. The Bible is talking about the places we tread upon. Jesus said in Luke 10 19 Behold, I give to you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. The enemy is under our feet. We have the power to tread and walk upon them. I want to underline that all the biblical wars involving the children of Israel against pagan nations were spiritual warfare. These wars were fought and won first in the spirit realm before any physical victory. I can afford to say that the children of Israel wars against the nations were the battle of the gods. Let read it in Daniel 1 1 2 In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim king of Judah came Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon to Jerusalem, and besieged it. 2 And the Lord gave Jehoiakim king of Judah into his hand, with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. The war between Israel and Babylon was foremost spiritual. After winning the war, the king of Babylon took the utensils of the temple of Jerusalem and went to consecrate them to the God of Babylon in thanksgiving. The king went to thank his God for enabling him to win the war, despite the fact that it is the God of Israel, who is the one that allowed him to win the war. 
I am trying to show you that that most of the wars that the children of Israel fought were first spiritual wars and any physical conquest or victory resulted from the outcome of that spiritual conflict. We know that the chief angel Michael is the one that was established to protect the nation of Israel. Let us read about the dynamic of physical conflict and spiritual war in Judges 5:12. Awake, awake, Deborah, awake, awake, utter a song, arise, Barak, and lead your captivity captive, you son of Abinoam. 19 The kings came and fought, then fought the kings of Canaan in Tanakh by the waters of Megiddo, they took no gain of money. 20 They fought from heaven, the stars in their courses fought against Sisera. Dear Christian, this water place at the Megiddo is the location of the apocalyptic war of the end of time between Michael and the dragon. However, the Bible is explicitly telling us in the above verses that the stars fought from heaven. From their courses, the stars from heaven fought against Sisera. In this war involving Deborah and Barak, the angels from heaven had to engage the forces of darkness and territorial princes in order to ensure victory. People think that when Moses was winning wars, there was no spiritual confrontation. That's false. All the wars in the Old Testament were spiritual wars. That is why the Ark of the Covenant was always carried before the people. The Ark of the Covenant was always preceding the people. Joshua 5:13 And it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and, behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him, and said to him, are you for us, or for our adversaries? 14 And he said, No, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth, and did worship, and said to him, What said my Lord to his servant? 15 And the captain of the Lord's host said to Joshua, Loose your shoe from off your foot, for the place whereon you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. The question we have to answer is, Why is the captain of the army of the Lord there? Who is he fighting against? Let me tell you that when these pagan nations were going to war, they were supported by their gods and forces of darkness. They were invoking their gods and deities before going to war. Nations go to war with the support of divinities and demons. All the nations of the world are under the rule of demons. And all the war between the children of Israel and the pagan nations were first and foremost spiritual war. The Bible says in 2 Kings 6:15, And when the servant of the man of God was risen early, and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master! How shall we do? 16 And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. 17 And Elisha prayed, and said, Lord, I pray you, open his eyes, that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and, behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. I believe that these horses and chariots of fire were for the sole purpose of battling the forces of darkness and deities of the enemy of the children of Israel. Remember the prophet said, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. The question is, who are those who are with them? We are talking about principalities and rulers of darkness. The Bible says in Exodus 17 9 to 15 And Moses said to Joshua, Choose us out men, and go out, fight with Amalek, tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. 10 So Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and fought with Amalek, and Moses, Aaron, and her went up to the top of the hill. 11 And it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed, and when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. 12 But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon, and Aaron and her stayed up his hands, the one on the one side, and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. 13 And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. 14 And the Lord said to Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. 15 And Moses built an altar, and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. This is a classic example of spiritual warfare in a military campaign. Beloved, I will advise you not to implicate yourself in a spiritual battle that does not concern you and don't go to war if you are not well armed. 
Many are rushing on the internet for ministry without realizing that there are demons operating on the internet. Like I said, every country is ruled by a territorial demon. Do you realize that one of these demons was able to prevent an angel from entering the territory of Persia in the aftermath of the fall of Adam? The earth came under the authority of the devil who had subdivided the earth and regions ruled by principalities. This is a well-organized demonic organization. When you board a plane from France in order to travel to Belgium, you must understand that you will be crossing spiritual borders and frontiers separating invisible regions ruled by principalities. When you are crossing borders of different countries in your plane, ruling powers and principalities are informed and they know that you are flying above their territories and jurisdictions. And when you land in a foreign country, the demonic prince ruling that country and region knows and is well informed that you have arrived in his jurisdiction. Every country you go to is ruled by a prince of darkness, and they would know that you have landed in their jurisdiction, their territory. I always wonder how could people go to missionary work in a foreign country without the instruction of the Lord? I remember I got a message. I mean, I always get messages of people inviting me to many different countries of the world to preach the gospel. Sometime they would tell me they have already bought a ticket and booked the hotel for me. They failed to realize that I don't travel unless I get permission from the Lord. I got a message from a pastor in Tunisia inviting me to preach there. He said he has bought a ticket already. I told him that I would come back to him. But when I went to pray, I was not allowed to go. I told him some other time I would come. I only travel on a mission when the Lord tells me to go. How can I go to a foreign country as a missionary without instruction from the Lord? If you are not armed and protected, you are putting yourself in danger. Dear brother and sister, you cannot go unless the Lord tells you to go. If you go without the Lord's instruction and if you are not armed, you are putting yourself in danger. This brother invited me to preach in Tunisia. But there is a river in Tunisia and this river wades through different territories. Each territory of that river is ruled by water siren. The book of Revelation says in Revelation 12 9 and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceives the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Those fallen angels fell to the earth, some in the sky, some in the mountains and land, and some in the sea. So there is a world under the sea ruled by sirens and water spirits. There is a marine kingdom underwater. And in that kingdom, there are different territories ruled by different sovereigns and marine spirits. You cannot just wake up and go to a foreign country and mission under the pretext that the Bible says to go to the whole world. And preach the gospel. This commission is general. But for you to go on a mission, you need specific order and instruction and mission order. The Bible says in Revelation 2 12-13 and to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, these things said he which has the sharp sword with two edges, 13 I know your works, and where you dwell, even where Satan's seat is, and you hold fast my name and have not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwells. Beloved, the throne of Satan is established in every town and city of this world through his representatives and delegated authorities, which are rulers of darkness and principalities that are ruling every city, town, district, and burrow of the whole world. Very often, streets and roads are ruled by witches and wizards. When the Lord sends a missionary to a region, he deploys angels to ensure his protection by taking into account territorial forces of that region. These angels will be with him during the time frame or the duration of that mission. Once the mission is finished, the missionary or the evangelist is supposed to retreat back to his country according to the Lord's instruction and the angels would return to the Lord as well because each mission has a time frame. Now imagine that you go by yourself with no protection and no anointing and no armor to confront the territorial forces, you will fall victim. Just imagine you go to a foreign country and mission without instruction and a mission order because you are trusting your anointing and your intelligence. You will face the territorial entity ruling that country who is ruling diverse evil powers that are ruling cities, towns, districts, villages, and municipalities. Wherever the city or village you go, you shall be opposed and confronted by the territorial ruler of your destination. Unless God told you to go there, you are not secure. This world is under the power of the evil one. 
Understand that the ruling prince who is in charge of your country has subdivided the land into several regions and sections. Then he has assigned rulers in town, cities, districts and municipalities, boroughs, quarters, and streets. In France, we have a principality ruling the whole country and France is divided into regions and in each region there are ruling entities who have the regional government made up of dark forces dominating and ruling respective regions. Then we have a ruling spirit dominating boroughs and quarters. We have the ruling spirit assigned in each street and road of quarters. We are trying to study spiritual maps and geography. The Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians 2 17 to 18 But we, brothers, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. 18 Why we would have come to you, even I Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. We are talking about spiritual maps and borders. We have here a case where Paul is stopped by Satan from crossing the border of a specific territory and according to my understanding, Paul did not have the permission or the mandate from the Lord to get there. We have here an example of Paul seeking direction in conformity with the will of God. In Acts 16 6-10 Now when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia, and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, 7 After they were come to Mysia, they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. 8 And they passing by Mysia came down to Troas. 9 And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia, and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia, and help us. 10 And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel to them. Beloved, there were times the Lord was making a way and opening the door for Paul to enter a particular territory. Unfortunately, many are rushing to the mission field without instruction and a mission order from the Lord. People are putting themselves in danger. I was supposed to be in New Caledonia for a mission but I am still waiting for confirmation. Because I know by taking that plane I will fly over countries and territories as ruled by principalities. I know that I will fly over an invisible region ruled by Prince of Darkness. I don't fly unless the Lord speak to me and give me instruction. When the Lord says go, even if we are in a plane in the turbulent zone in the air, I have peace because I know that I heard the voice of the Lord. Dear brother and sister, we must be careful. We should not trust our capacity, we should not be sure of ourselves. Imagine you are in a plane above the ocean in a zone of turbulence and by your own admission, you went by yourself without the Lord's instruction. The thing is the Lord never sent you there. Jonah went to Tarsus, but the Lord sent him to Nineveh. In the spirit world, each child of God is assigned to a specific geographical territory. Peter was sent to the Jews. Paul was sent to the nations. Even if Paul was sent to the nations when he was supposed to go to a particular country, he was getting instruction from the Lord. It's the Holy Spirit that guides us and keeps us from the trap of the enemy. As we are fighting an invisible enemy that we cannot see, therefore, the Spirit of God keep us from his trap. The kingdom of the enemy is well organized geographically, and each child of God is allocated to a specific territory. The Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians 10 13-15 But we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God has distributed to us, a measure to reach even to you. 14 For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reached not to you, for we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ. 15 Not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors, but having hope, when your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly. In the above verse, the Apostle Paul acknowledges his geographical limit, and he recognized the field of influence that God has assigned to him. He said to the Corinthians that he is not overstepping his bounds. When the children of Israel arrived in the Promised Land, the Lord divided the land and assigned land to each of the tribes. Everyone must understand his spiritual geographic field of action. The Bible says in the book of Acts 19.24-36 For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain to the craftsmen, 25 whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation, and said, Sirs, you know that by this craft we have our wealth. 26 Moreover you see and hear, that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, 
This Paul has persuaded and turned away many people, saying that they are no gods, which are made with hands. You can read the whole verses to understand better. Dear brothers and sisters, this above passage informed us that the goddess Diana or Artemis was the principality governing the territory of Ephesus. When Paul arrived in this city to preach the gospel, the servants of the goddess who were satanic priests and occultists opposed him. When people heard about Paul converting the inhabitants of the city they began to protest by shouting the name of Artemis who was the ruling divinity in the city in protest of Paul's evangelical activities. There will always be a counterattack from the ruler of darkness whenever a missionary arrived in his territory, and Paul was opposed vigorously. Even the city clerk said to the crowds that the image of Diana fell from heaven. He was talking about Jupiter who was regarded as the principal divinity. The Council of Ephesus met in June and July 431 at the Church of Mary in Ephesus in Anatolia. The Council declared Mary as Theotokos, Mother of God. Effectively the Catholic Church adopted Diana or Artemis as the Mother of Christ, the Holy Virgin. The Catholic Church and the Vatican is the big city ruling the world that is governed by the goddess Diana or Artemis. She is the woman sitting on many waters that is getting the kings of the earth drunk. She is the most powerful fallen angel ruling the world of female divinity. The devil is using this woman to destroy the world. So anybody who aspires to rule in Ephesus and govern the city was obligated to pledge allegiance to this female divinity called Artemis or Diana, who had killed prophets, priests, and apostles. She is the one mentioned in Revelation 17 1-6 And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying to me, Come here, I will show to you the judgment of the great whore that sits on many waters, two with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. 3 So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit on a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. 4 And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication, five and on her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Six and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus, and when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. The Holy Spirit said to the church of Ephesus that they have abandoned their first love. This is due to the influence of Diana or Artemis prevailing over Ephesus. The Lord sent a message to the church in Revelation 2. 1-5 to, to the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things said he that holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the middle of the seven golden candlesticks, Two, I know your works, and your labor, and your patience, and how you cannot bear them which are evil, and you have tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and have found them liars, three and have borne, and have patience, and for my name's sake have labored, and have not fainted. For nevertheless I have somewhat against you, because you have left your first love. 5 Remember therefore from where you are fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly, and will remove your candlestick out of his place, except you repent. Grace be with you all that have Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, Amen, bye for now. Hello everyone, thank you for watching our video for today, I trust it blesses your heart, endeavor to give a like to this video and share it to all your contact and loved ones. I pray the grace of the living God will continue to rest upon you and upon everything that pertains to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. If you have any question or comments kindly drop them in the comments section, God bless you. See you in our next video and have a lovely day, bye for now.